Good morning, wildlife wanderers. So today I'm gonna to be birding around Courtney, which is the city south of the city I live, Campbell River. I am searching for Buick's Wren, which has proven to be a difficult task. I've been looking for it for about the last month or so and haven't had much luck. Here's a map of all the eBird hotspots with records of Buick's Wren that I checked out over the last month or so looking for this bird. And I struck out at each of these places. I dedicated two mornings looking for this bird, but never got a sight of one. Campbell River, where I live, is near the north edge of its range. Despite it being observed there, there's records on eBird. I haven't had much luck. Buick's Wren seems to be more abundant as you move south on the island, so I thought I'd give Courtney a shot. I'm here at the Trent River Estuary, which is a nice little natural area. It's gonna be a great morning of birding, whether I see it or not. So come along with me, let's do some birding. Hopefully I see this wren. If not, that's okay too. So here's where the Trent River flows into the ocean. That's Comox across the way. I decided to check out the mouth of the river, which is a great place to find waterfowl. There's still a couple ducks on my list, including blue winged teal, but no luck. All I saw were a couple of honkers and a pair of common mergansers, which are fun to watch. Here's some Sitka Rose, which is the wild rose growing here on Vancouver Island. So I cruised around the estuary and I did hear one alarm call of Buick's Wren. So I guess that counts from a detection standpoint, although it was from such thick shrubs that I didn't get a positive identification. Pretty sure it was a Buick's Wren though. So at least I know they're here. I'm not sure when the activity of the species is the highest in the year. They might be an early breeder and maybe now is the time where they're sort of laying low. The great thing about this spot has been the number of yellow warblers that are here. You can hear them. I'm basically surrounded by them. Always a pleasure to see. And as a Canadian, you really have to appreciate them while they're here. Also, willow flycatcher is a new species on the year. It's always a successful outing when you get a new bird. It's always interesting to think where a migratory bird came from, where it spent most of its year. After all, these flycatchers are only with us for three or four months. This willow flycatcher might have come from as far south as Peru, which is pretty impressive for a bird weighing only 14 grams. Found someone's secret chilling spot. No luck on the Buick's Wren at the Trent River Estuary, so I headed here to Lazo Marsh, which is a pretty gorgeous marsh complex. I've never been here before. There's this gorgeous boardwalk and there's lots of birds. I was harassed by some chickadees on my way in here that obviously have been fed. It's always funny when you have those habituated flocks that kind of run up to you and are a bit aggressive in terms of wanting to be fed. I haven't heard any Buick's Wren so far, although they have been recorded here, but who knows, maybe we'll have some luck. Even the song sparrows are pretty habituated. This is with my cell phone camera. So in the wetland, there are two wetland plants that are both have yellow flowers. The first is yellow pond lily, which is always a cool species to see. But then there's also pale yellow iris, which is an invasive species that you see in wetlands here. This red winged blackbird sounds really weird. I enjoyed watching this red-breasted nuthatch for a little bit. They're a pretty common bird throughout North America, but for whatever reason, I don't see many around Campbell River. I love the way they climb along branches. This one scored pretty big, finding this large insect under the bark. I also stopped to admire this female Rufus hummingbird. It's always nice when a hummingbird perches near you. You can really examine them and just see how cute they are. Now I'm going to continue my search on the other side of the road. The trail continues down here. This habitat looks a little more suitable. I've kind of given up hope though. Species of raspberry or bramble is now in bloom and this is thimbleberry. So great success everyone. I found a Buick's Wren. Wasn't easy, but we got it done. The trail that I started on ended on this road and there is this bushy hillside here. And I was just about to turn around when I saw a little bird in the bushes with a long tail and I knew there was a good shot that there was a Buick's Wren. That's a lifer for me. Just a really cool looking bird with a long tail, long beak, the white supercilium. For whatever reason, Wrens have a special place in my heart. For much of the time, they sulk through the bushes. But every so often, one would emerge to perch on a branch, shake its tail feather, and sing. 
Sure enough, I've seen three wrens. I believe it might be a breeding pair and a young of year. The one bird had a little different plumage. The white supercilium was not as pronounced and it was sort of begging for food from one of the adults. One interesting thing is they seem to like the Scots broom, which is a notorious invasive species here on Vancouver Island, this shrub with the yellow flowers. And this plant takes over a lot of disturbed areas here on Vancouver Island. But during the time I've been watching the wren, I've also seen bush tit and orange crown warbler forage along these shrubs. So it just shows you that yes, invasive species are bad, but they still do provide some habitat, some resources for species. I'm not saying don't cut all the broom off your property, probably still should, but it's a little more nuanced than invasives are evil. I think one thing to note is they do sound a lot like a song sparrow, even more so in person than recordings on an app. So that might have thrown me off a little bit. Maybe I've been hearing them and just chalking those off to song sparrows. They certainly aren't loud birds though. Many wrens are, seem to be very boisterous, give a lot of alarm calls and sing a lot. These wrens have been pretty silent, which might be why it took me so long to find them. Well guys, that was an awesome morning of birding. Thanks for watching. I'm super stoked to have seen the Buick's wren after searching for so long. I'm not sure what the number one species on my list anymore now is. Kind of feels like there's a giant void there. And until next time, happy birding.